Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things Lego. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hey, I'm Patrick, and um, here's Pieces of Cinema again. <laughs> Uh, this is the fourth time uh, doing an interview with you guys, so I'm very honored for that. The cool thing is you add new ones every time, so we'll definitely be kind of focusing in on some of the new ones, and it's been really cool to see you add more and more scenes every time and how popular this is with the public at every show. Yeah, we're finally up to 50, which I'm very happy with, and it's been so great seeing the public reception to all of them together for the first time. So, yeah, We can start in at the top corner then here. So a couple of these are going to be familiar to Beyond the Brick viewers. This first one is Frankenstein, uh, the original from 1931, built entirely with black, gray, and white bricks to kind of emulate that black and white style that the movie was made in. Um, we got Frankenstein's right here, Dr. Frankenstein, and then his monster, and then Igor, his little hunchback helper, right behind him. Next up is King Kong from 33. This one utilizes one of the old um, nine volt battery motors that Lego produced in like the 80s and 90s, I think, um, to make the, the planes fly around. Uh, up next is Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, recently updated with the new Snow White minifigure, which is really cool. Um, is that something you've done throughout the years you've done this? If they come out, come out with a new minifigure or something, you'll update some of those? Yes, absolutely. Um, I like to keep the minifigs looking fresh, but I keep the builds mostly the same. Um, I can remove this roof here to see inside a little bit better. And there's a gear in the back that allows um, Snow White and uh, Dopey and whoever that one is to dance around a little bit. Next is the, the scene from The Wizard of Oz of the, the whole crew going down the yellow brick road. Um, not much to say about that one. Lego did an excellent job with those minifigs, and they really bring that whole build to life. Now we're finally to something new. This is Citizen Kane, and this is actually the 50th um, build that I made for this series, and I figured Citizen Kane was a, a good one to end it on. Um, this one was made with, I took a picture of the minifigure and then edited it to be black and white, printed it out on sticker paper and put it on there. Um, the letters are brick built. Uh, the arms for Citizen Kane himself are uh, from a company called Crazy Arms to get that, um, that nice posing there. They do really cool, really unique stuff that can, yeah, really add some, like, dynamic movement to your minifix. Yes, this is at one of his big campaigns about halfway through the movie and um, he's already a big like larger than life character um, very ambitious and very uh, prideful of what he does which you can tell with a giant picture of himself <laughs> right behind him. Uh, the lettering up top is done really well too at that scale and kind of incorporating into the overall poster look. Thank you. Yeah, I, I spent way longer than I wanted to on the lettering just to make it look perfect um, and I'm very happy with the final result. Now for another new one is Casablanca uh, from 42. One of my favorite movies of all time. Um, this is so you'll notice that this one and Citizen Kane are not black and white like they are in the actual movie. That's because I wanted to get the likenesses of the characters um, down packs really well and Lego doesn't have very many options for uh, black and white minifigures. Um, so for this specific shot, I took some inspiration from the Walt Disney World Hollywood Studios ride, the great movie ride, where they have this scene um, with their animatronics, uh, obviously in color. So this is the very end of the movie where the iconic line of, we'll always have Paris is said. Um, we can see there's some luggage up front because they're about to get on the plane. Um, one other fun detail that I added just for me inside this cargo crate here is um, the gun that uh, Humphrey Bogart's character pulls at the end of the movie and their little travel papers that he gives them. I love that. Those little extra details like that are so much fun. Yes. Uh, that's one of the best things about a building so small is that I can put the, the small little extra details in, even if no one else knows about it but me. Next is Godzilla 1954. Um, recently has had a pretty big resurgence in popularity after Godzilla minus one. Um, I guess this one is kind of considered black and white as well, uh, since he's all gray. Um, 
but that's one of my earliest additions to this um, series of builds. Next is the Ten Commandments from uh, 58 with Charleston Heston. Um, and I know you're going to give me some slack for it, but I still have not watched the Ten Commandments. <laughs> I love how many years you've done this series and it still hasn't come time to watch the movie yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, part of it is just being able to find it somewhere. But as soon as I do, I will set aside four hours of my day to watch it. Speaking of four-hour movies, we've got Ben-Hur, which I have seen this one because it was on a streaming service a while back. Um, also starring uh, Charleston Heston. This is one of my newest um, and maybe one of my favorites just because of the horses. I didn't want to use Lego's official horses because I thought they were kind of, they kind of made the build look boring. Um, and doing my own brick-built horses, I could get a more dynamic pose for each one and add a lot of movement to the scene. I also added the two dust clouds behind the chariot wheels as like a last minute addition and I think that gives it a lot of movement and really jumps off of the, uh, the boundary there. One of the greatest films of all time, I think. Uh, next is uh, Psycho. Um, back, back in black and white, uh, we've got um, this cool little technique here with the jumper plates and two by two tiles. You'll see that in a few other places. Um, that's just done by putting these jumper plates down and then putting the two by two tile at a 45 degree angle on it. That's such a nice flooring technique though and it just adds such a, a great element compared to just kind of putting the tiles straight onto a plate. Yeah, and it works well for the bathroom scene too because that's how the, the floor of that bathroom actually looks in the movie. It's um, that di diagonal diagonal tile. Uh, okay, so next is 007 Goldfinger. This is more of a representation of the entire James Bond franchise, but there's a few key things that I wanted, like him having the white suit with the little red pauldron and the um, obviously the Aston Martin. Uh, and Goldfinger had both of those things and Sean Connery, so I figured that was the best one to represent the entire series from. Uh, this build was actually made before LEGO made a um, Aston Martin Lego set with um, Daniel Craig's Bond in it. So uh, I decided to keep my own. I felt it kept it more as my own build than um, Lego's, but Lego did an excellent job with theirs as well. So this next one is the original How the Grinch Stole Christmas animated movie uh, from sometime in the 60s. Uh, well, actually, this is probably one of the only Christmas movies that I've got, but in my opinion, this is one of the best Christmas movies of all time. I watch it every year with my family. Um, so we've got the Grinch stuffing the Christmas tree up the chimney with Cindy Lou Who um, coming and catching him. Uh, the, the Christmas lights are little Christmas fairy lights that I got from like a local hobby store. Um, most of them are under the build. I didn't need all of them for, to cover that Lego tree there. Uh, so we'll have to go all the way back down for the next one. So this next one is The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, one of my favorite films of all time. And this is a good time to mention that not all of the builds that are in this series were originally planned for it. Um, I added, I, I kind of changed the series as I watched more movies, and this was one of those cases. After watching this movie, I loved it so much, I knew it needed a place on this um, display and so I built it. Um, this is the final scene of the movie where they have this big three-way Mexican standoff in the middle of a cemetery so lots of cool um, visuals and suspense in that scene. So we're to another new one now, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey. This one was highly recommended in the comment section of the last video. Um, so we've got, this is the Beginning of the movie, the dawn of man, where the uh, monolith just appears in the middle of this desolate planet, and then the the apes or monkeys or whatever they are start to develop more sentience. I guess that's one way you could interpret how that scene goes. Um, 2001 has a lot of different scenes that I could have done. It's a, a lot of really great um, visually striking moments in that movie, but I felt that the opening was... Uh, really fitting, especially since it was referenced in the Barbie movie, so it's more at the pub, uh, general audience's attention. 
Uh, next is Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Um, not too much to say about this one. It's one of my more colorful uh, builds on this this play, and the uh, chocolate water or chocolate river fall thing can trickle just a little bit just by turning this crank in the back just to add just a little bit of movement to that. Um, so I think that's really cool. Uh, next one is another fan favorite at the show is Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Um, a super low budget British comedy fantasy movie. And yet it's, it's, so, it's so funny and it's stood the test of time and has a really big cult following. This is the scene where King Arthur encounters the Black Knight and they have a duel and he chops off his arms but the Black Knight is still ready to fight. So um, that's where that iconic line of it's just a flesh wound comes from. Uh, one fun detail I put on our little, I guess it's his squire, he's holding two coconuts that he bangs together to make the um, horse galloping sound because the movie couldn't afford horses. <laughs> one of my favorites here. Uh, next is Jaws. This was one of the earliest builds that I did, um, probably the fifth one. Um, Jaws had, has, has had a pretty big impact on blockbuster movies as a whole. Some people would say this is the first blockbuster um, in history, so it definitely deserves a spot here. I brick built the shark because um, it's kind of similar to what they did in the actual movie, was making their own anim animatronic shark, but for them, the shark didn't work half the time. So uh, it led to them having to hide the shark underwater um, which added to the expense, the uh, it um, suspense of the f of the film, which is really cool. Next is Superman from '78. This is the maybe infamous scene of him flying around the world and reversing time. Some people would say that's a little bit of jumping the shark, but I think it's really cool and it fits the vibe of the movie very well. Plus, it gave me a chance to build that the famous Lowell sphere as a globe and use another one of the 9-volt battery motors to rotate it. This, this was peak superhero movies before Marvel, you know, the recent Marvel Cinematic Universe. Yeah, th some would say this is the one that started it all, um, which is a part of the reason why it's here. So, uh, This next one is fairly new, um, the Muppet movie from 1979. One of my personal favorites on the whole display. Uh, as soon as LEGO made those excellent Muppet CMF figures. I knew I had to do, include this movie. Um, Jim Henson was more in the television scene, but um, a lot of the things that he introduced in the Muppet movie have become staples in the Muppet show. And the Muppets themselves are kind of celebrities on their own. So I felt like they were fitting of this. As a little nod toward Jim Henson, he is included in the back here. Uh, I can rotate this a bit. Oh, I'm sorry. To see the inside. There he is right there puppeteering Kermit the Frog. Um, that's one of my favorite details on the entire display. Shout out Beyond the Brick for this sticker. Uh, this is the second build that I ever did because I knew that when I started this series, I needed the most iconic scenes in cinema history. And this probably is the most iconic scene in cinema history. Walk up to anybody you know and ask them what the most iconic Star Wars scene is, they'll probably say this one. Um, uh, I updated it with the Cloud City Duel minifigures from a couple years ago, uh, but otherwise it's, it's original. Um, Lego actually made this as a set, that's where I pulled these minifigs from. There's actually quite a few on here that I made first and then Lego um, made their set version of it, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah. I think, I think it speaks to you know you hitting on a lot of those popular areas that the public are interested in. So that's that's neat. Definitely. Uh, this is a set Lego will never make though. Um, the Shining by Stanley Kubrick, 1980. I think I think it's 1980. Um, the very iconic "Here's Johnny" moment where uh, Jack Nicholson Nicholson is um, chopping down the door to um, get to his wife. Uh, fun fact about this scene. Uh, the props department did not know that um, Jack Nicholson had some training in the fire department and knew how to use an axe, so he kept breaking the doors too easily and too quickly. So they made him do it like 40 or 50 times before they got a take that they really liked. 
Uh, next is Indiana Jones, another one of those super iconic openings to a movie. Um, this one specifically is Raiders of the Lost Ark, where he's uh, claiming the golden idol for himself and has to put the bag of sand on the, the pedestal at the exact same time or else the trap's going to go off, which it ends up doing. Um, this is one I did not change the minifigure on, even though LEGO did make a new Indiana Jones set last year. Just because of nostalgia reasons, I grew up with this Indiana Jones minifig, and I prefer it. Back in my day, this is what we had. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Okay, next is E.T. So I know there's a lot of Spielberg on this. We'll, I think we'll see one more later on, but Spielberg makes a lot of great, iconic movies, um, especially box office hits. Um, so it's hard not to talk about Spielberg when you're talking about cinema history as a whole. Um, I think it, the scene kind of speaks for itself. This is E.T. Uh, with Elliot flying in front of the moon. Um, really iconic shot. I think Spielberg actually uses this shot as the logo for his production studio. So that really speaks to how iconic it is. Next is the uh, tallest and heaviest one of all of these builds is uh, Ghostbusters uh, from 84. Um, this is near the end of the movie where that god creature tells them to imagine the what their doom is going to be and one of them thinks of the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. So a giant Stay Puft Marshmallow Man comes and attacks them. But since he's Marshmallow, they defeat him pretty easily. Uh, okay, so we got to go down again. Keep going in order here with another little known film. Yeah, uh, only a few people really know about this one. It's uh, a little film called Back to the Future where they build this DeLorean time machine and travel back in time. Uh, this is Doc Brown and Marty McFly from the actual sets. And this is, is the actual Lego Ideas. I guess it was Cuso at the time. Yeah, throwing it way back there with that one of the first ones ever. Yeah, so I meticulously cut it in half to make it look like it's halfway traveled through time and then left these little cheese slopes as flames going down the side because it leaves a fiery tire trail behind it. Um, yeah. Uh, aliens, um, James Cameron's first appearance on this list. We'll see him again in just a moment. Um, I like both Alien and Aliens, but personally I like Aliens, the sequel, more just because it's more action-packed and uh, the special effects are incredible, especially that power loader mech. Agreed. The first time I watched Alien, it was definitely a bit of a slog uh, getting getting through to the exciting part. Yeah, yeah. But this one is like full throttle the whole way through, edge of your seat. So had to include it. Another James Cameron and probably one of his best movies he's ever made is Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Um, the special effects in this movie was absolutely revolutionary, especially the T-1000 with his liquid metal transformation. This is the scene where Terminator, the evil one from the previous movie, is actually a good guy now. Big plot twist. And he's rescuing John Connor from the other evil Terminator. Um, very cool. All right, so this next one is one of the most critically acclaimed horror movies of all time, The Silence of the Lambs. This is the scene where, um, I forget the doctor's name, but she's interrogating Hannibal Lecter, getting some advice about another case that she's working. And um, Anthony, Ma um, Anthony Hopkins, his performance here is so unnerving and so incredible. Um, I wanted to include it. Uh, since the... Since the scene is rather small, I wanted to get as accurate to the movie as possible. So um, he's got these cinder block walls, just like in the movie. He's got his sink and his toilet and uh, this little table, his bed that he sits on. And then he's got papers pinned to the wall all over the place. Um, so I, I think I, I recreated it rather nicely. And fun fact about this one, I think we're done with horror for now, but three of the horror movies that I've got all have a toilet in the build. So Psycho, uh, The Shining, and this one all have a toilet. I don't really know how that happened, but it did. Another Spielberg. Um, 
one of his biggest movies ever. I think for a time it was the most profitable movie of all time. Uh, Jurassic Park. Uh, shout out to my brother Caleb for loaning me the T-Rex and the, the two minifigures inside. He's a big Jurassic Park fan and um, bought the sets when they came out all those years ago. I like how you took the tail off to kind of give that, you know, cut off vignette perspective. Well, that was mostly because they wouldn't fit on this new display that I had assembled. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll say that it's, that's the reason for it. Uh, next is The Nightmare Before Christmas. And I actually learned at the show that we have a Nightmare Before Christmas set coming out this year um, of this scene, which is really cool. So I designed Jack Skellington myself with those long, lanky arms. Um, I think he looks more like him than the actual minifigure. Um, this is another one that wasn't originally on the list, um, but after coming up with that design for Jack, I, I knew I wanted to include it. Uh, next is Pulp Fiction. Um, we've got Vince and Jules right there about to shoot uh, that dude. Um, a couple other details is the briefcase that serves as the MacGuffin of the film. And, um, and as like a little nod to the name of the movie, there's a, a carton of orange juice there. As you know, orange juice has pulp in it, uh, and it's Pulp Fiction. I thought that was clever. Um, Very nice. Next is The Lion King. Uh, this one is kind of built to be like a forced perspective, like the, the ground is way lower than it actually is. And um, everyone knows the opening to Lion King, Rafiki presenting Simba to the, the masses of Africa. Um, one of Disney's best and um, really great movie. Next is Pic uh, Disney Pixar's uh, Toy Story, the first 3D animated feature film in, in history. Um, and they knocked it out of the park, I think. Uh, some of the animation doesn't hold up quite as well today, but for the time it was really revolutionary. Um, this scene I selected is the, the claw machine at um, Pizza Planet. So we've got that rocket ship looking uh, machine with all the aliens inside. Uh, next is Mission Impossible. Um, I think Mission Impossible, like as a franchise, is one of the few that gets better with every movie they come out with. But you got to respect the one that started it all. This scene is so suspenseful with him dangling right above the floor and the little mouse that comes in and starts messing stuff up. Um, and this giant, definitely from the 90s computer uh, that has the data that they need. I really like this build a lot. Next is uh, probably, I think it's the last James Cameron, uh, Titanic. Um, for a long, long time, it was the highest grossing film of all time and like the only one to make $2 billion at box office. Uh, this is the scene where it's um, Jack and Rose at the front of the ship, um, spreading their arms out, just having a moment together. Next is The Matrix from 99. Uh, this is the bullet time event, as it's been called. Um, that movie had a lot of really revolutionary effects for uh, CGI, especially, and um, cool camera shots and great action scenes. Uh, definitely one of the best action movies of uh, all time, I think. Next to that is an equally revolutionary movie as well. Yes, yeah, we've got Shrek from 2001. Um, now, Shrek is impactful because it was the first movie to win Best Animated Picture at the Oscars, beating Monsters, Inc., which I think Monsters, Inc. should have won, but that's another story. Um, having this build here gives DreamWorks some representation, and Shrek is a huge, huge franchise for them, so another uh, great pick. And there is a little mechanism for Shrek where he can pop out of his outhouse just like at the beginning of the movie. Let's see if I have some room to do that. Yeah, it doesn't work perfectly, but the idea is he bursts the door open on his way out to start his day. There we go. At least some playability in there. Yeah, I like to add a few little play features um, in some of these. Oh, well. He just got to 
a cut yard or something. Um, because, well, I, I like to play with them, you know? Uh, like having the spinning for Snow White and the trickling for the Willy Wonka. I think it adds a lot of fun play features to the build. When these aren't on display at a show, do you keep them on display like at your house or is there not enough space for that? Not enough space for it at the moment, but um, the plan is to have a more permanent display in my home set up. And then what is this next one here? The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. So the first of the three Lord of the Rings movies, um, one of my favorite series of movies of all time. Uh, this is the You Shall Not Pass moment uh, near the end of the first one um, where Gandalf stands off against the Balrog in the Mines of Moria. I did not upgrade those figures just yet. I meant to before the show. But r last year they came out with Rivendell, which had a whole new fellowship in it. They look great. So I will likely replace those pretty soon. Next up is uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. This is the um, not so heroic entrance of uh, Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow as he approaches the dock with his sinking ship. Great intro, uh, introduction to the character. Um, really funny scene. And it's a decent franchise. I think it kind of fell off near the last two movies, but um, the first three are pretty good and a lot of people have fond memories of them, so that's why they're included. Now, Spider-Man 2, I think, is one of the greatest superhero movies of all time. Um, I love the, like, specifically for Doc Ock, I love the mix of puppetry for his arms and then early CGI to make them look really big and menacing and imposing. And then, obviously, uh, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man is the best one, and everyone in the YouTube comments will agree with that. Um, so this is their fight on the front of the subway. It used to be um, Spider-Man stopping the train, but I felt like this was a better way to display it because I could show off this cool Doc Ock arm and hand technique um, and have a little battle going on here. Next is The Dark Knight, another one that a lot of people would say is the best superhero movie of all time. A lot of people say it's the best Batman movie of all time, but I think it's been dethroned by the Batman, which we'll see in just a little bit. But this is the um, interrogation scene between Batman and Joker in the GCPD. Um, I did this cool little technique for the brick walls. Those are done with, uh, let's see, um, hinge plates on a clip on a brick with a stud on the side. It's a really looks, neat technique. I think it looks more interesting than just um, the masonry brick. Uh, so that's what I went with for this. Since it was just going to be two minifigs sitting on a table, I wanted to have something that would make it pop. Uh, this, this next one, I could have picked a dozen scenes from the Harry Potter franchise, but the final duel between Harry and Voldemort is what the whole series was leading up to. And... Um, it's just a really cool battle set in Hogwarts with the wands clashing. Makes for a great moment. Lego did make this one last year too, I think, Battle of Hogwarts. I haven't got it yet, but once I do, I will replace these figures. And probably the little wand effect, because they had new wand effects in there um, uh, to have this one up to date. Now, a lot of people get stuck on this one, but this one is Logan from 2017. Um, one of the final installments to the X-Men franchise. And uh, probably, I know I'm, I'm sounding like a broken record, but this is another one of the greatest superhero movies of all time. Turns out there have just been a lot of great superhero movies made. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially uh, like between Spider-Man and, and Superman and uh, X-Men and some more later. But um, this is Logan's death that happens at the end of the movie. Um, but turns out maybe this isn't his death because he's returning in the next Deadpool movie that comes out this year. So I'm curious to see how they'll do that. But I think it's a great moment from a great movie, which is why I included it. All right, so next is Wonder Woman, also 2017. Um, I built this one because Wonder Woman's a great movie, and I wanted to have the DC Trinity 
here, the DC Trinity is Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. So I've got Superman up here, Batman right here, and over there, but we'll see that in a second. And then Wonder Woman right here. Um, so I think that's really cool to have that. Set in World War One. so I built this little trench from the trench, warf uh, trench warfare and No Man's Land that Wonder Woman is passing through, which is very cool. All right, so now we're to a new one. This is Blade Runner 2049. Um, I watched this movie recently and was blown away by it. Um, all the effects in there were really good. The story was great. Built off the original very nicely. So um, this is near the end of the movie where Officer K is headed to his final battle. And um, he just lost his AI girlfriend, Joy, and then sees an in a... Um, advertisement for her that he interacts with briefly um, and this is that scene it's this enormous holographic or hologram um, of joy and they have a, a moment together before he goes off to his death it's a really unique build style here what are some of the challenges of using all those uh, trans what is it, like purple and blue bricks yeah so the biggest challenge there was just my limited um, variety of pieces in that color this is built basically entirely out of one by two bricks, one by two plates, and one by one studs. Um, so it was a bit of a challenge just to make that work and get the proportions just right, uh, but I think I did well with it. And after building it, and it was trans clear, I decided it would look really great if this thing could light up. So I modified the base and attached some lights to the bottom of it facing up, uh, which illuminates the whole thing just like in the movie. I think it really completes the scene. Looks great. So this is our installment for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Definitely MCU was a big part of cinema history as of late. They just put out hit after hit after hit, and this was one of their biggest, Avengers Infinity War. Kind of what all of the movies before it was building up to was this moment of the snap, and then Endgame was kind of the fallout of that. Um, I built this one... Actually, I think Endgame was out when I built this one, but I personally like Infinity War more, which is why I chose it over Endgame. Uh, next is the Joker. This is, fun fact, this is the one that started it all. So back in October 2019, when all the memes of the Joker stairs were going out, um, I wanted to build that out of Lego. Built it on this little base and put the whole thing together and really liked the style of it. So then I built Empire Strikes Back in the same style. And then I built Spider-Man 2 in the same style. And then it just kept going and going, made some plans, and then made it a whole series. So there it is, the one that started it all. So next is The Batman from 2022. Um, when I watched this movie for the first time in theaters, I was completely blown away by it. I think it's one of the best interpretations of Batman we've ever gotten. And I'm a huge Batman fan, so... All of those reasons really made it a, a good fit for this, um, this movie. This rain technique, um, I saw it on a build from this guy on Instagram named Zeno Murphy. I think that's his name for one of his Hobbit builds. And I thought it was really cool, so I replicated it here to kind of show that rainy storminess of Gotham City and how dirty and awful everything is. All right, so next is Top Gun Maverick. Um, it uh, exploded at the box office in 2022, um, and it was a great movie, awesome theater experience, so I decided to build it for, for this. Um, looking back on it now, I actually really don't like this one because of how big it is. Um, it really uh, overshadows the other ones, um, but I think it did a good job replicating the, I think it's an F-15, but I'll probably be corrected on that. Um, Tomcat. The wings can flip open like this, which is what they use when they're landing, and these little, little panels that go up and down. Uh, cockpit can open as well. Um, and it looks like there's room for two, but there's not. So, this is your final call. Uh, but yeah, there it is. So, last one was the theatrical event from 2023. Um, and it was the Barbenheimer event. Now you may be confused because right now it just looks like Barbie, 
But if I just spin it around like this, now we have Oppenheimer. Oh, I love it. Very creative. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things at a show to display because I'll have it on the Barbie side and have some people's attention with it. And then I'll just walk up and turn it around all of a sudden. And they just have their minds blown <laughs> by just a simple turning mechanism. It's so cool. Both of these movies are great. I watched them both on the same weekend. Um, so, yeah. So this is, once again, an incredible array of builds. It's been so much fun over the last few years to see you continue to build this. Now, I know your goal as we did these videos was always to get to 50, which you've accomplished that goal now. So have you uh, thought anything about kind of pushing further and doing more movie scenes? Uh, maybe at some point finally watching the Ten Commandments. Where are you at on that? Well, eventually I will watch the Ten Commandments. <laughs> but um, I think 50 is a great number to end it on. But I don't want to say end because... I'm sure I'll come back to this series at some point with another round of, of movies because there's always, there's a hundred movies I could do. Um, and, uh, but for now I want to move on to some other stuff. I've got a big Arkham Asylum project that I'm hoping to get going pretty soon. Um, but I'm very thankful for this series and for the, the um, growth that it's given me as both a builder and online on Instagram. Um, I've, I think I've improved my building skills a lot uh, through this series and I've gotten to interact with so many movie fans and Lego fans at shows from the past five years with this display and it's just been awesome. That's great to hear. So for everyone watching, you know, if there is a real a movie you really want to see uh, Patrick, you know, tackle, when he does maybe come back to this idea in the future, you can leave that in the comments below. Maybe he can revisit that and look for more inspiration when you're looking to do this again. So anything else you want to share with us here? One last surprise. So since Citizen Kane was the very last build, um, I decided to house a little, um, little memento for myself in it. So on the back of it here, I've made myself a little trophy um, <laughs> that says Pieces of Cinema and has a golden brick over the top, just as a way that I'll never forget this, this series and for how much it means to me as a builder. I love that. Way to commemorate, you know, getting to a big milestone. And I really appreciate you taking the time consistently over the years to take us through these builds and share your inspiration, all the fun little details and pieces that you used in each of these. So keep up the great work and we'll definitely be looking forward to more of your work in the future. Thank you. And I want to say a big thank you to you guys because when that first video hit a million views, I was completely blown away. Nothing I had done had ever gotten that big of a reaction before. And it has tremendously helped my growth and my confidence as a builder. So I'm really thankful for you guys for, for doing that for me. Absolutely. It's well-deserved. And I think the, the public reaction shows that as everyone comes by. And there's always a crowd checking out these builds here. So definitely great work. Thank you. Thank you.